<laughs> now, tonight, he's on the islands of St. Kilda attempting to send a letter by simply throwing it into the sea and crossing his fingers. I think someone needs to have a quiet word with Mike. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> more than 100 miles out from the coast of Scotland, there are few places more isolated than the islands of St Kilda. But even here, human ingenuity managed to overcome the problems of communication. First inhabited around 4,000 years ago, until the 1930s, a few hardy souls made this their home. With no phones on the island or postal service, the inhabitants of St Kilda found a novel way of keeping in touch. Tiny hand-built mail boats cast adrift on a tumultuous sea. St Kildans fashion mail boats out of bottles, cocoa tins, any waterproof container secured to a wooden keel, and each with a handmade float attached. I've set myself the challenge of making and launching my very own one-show mailboat with a message for the mainland. But the first hurdle is getting there. Derek Gordon runs boat trips to St Kilda and knows all too well how treacherous the trip can be. The St Kildans would have very uh, limited opportunity to come back to the mainland. Life for them was on this... Uh, a craggy piece of rock out in the Atlantic, exposed to the storms that come in. It was very much um, survival living that they had out there. But the problem is it's such a hostile environment that uh, you could not keep a boat there at all. So in fact, they didn't fish. So the entire um, food stuff was seabirds. at sea and St Kilda's imposing cliffs come into view. Islanders would scale them in search of food, but in 1930, the last 36 left the island for good. Today the seas have been kind to us, but it was rough waters and stormy weather that led to the creation of the first St Kilda mailboat. There was a journalist here, John Sands, he'd, he'd come to spend the summer, but uh, I'd hoped to get off in the last boat the season which didn't happen because of the, the weather. Then uh, at the end of January 1877 a, a boat came in the bay and it was actually Austrian sailors that had been shipwrecked. So so John Sands you know thought that he could send a, what's called a mail boat and, and unbelievably um, from like five or six days later it turns up in Orkney Amazing. and three weeks later from the guys coming in the bay uh, a naval vessel comes to get them off. In 1957, in the midst of the Cold War, St Kilda had a reprieve when the MOD set up a radar base on the island. For the first time, communication with the mainland became possible, albeit top secret. Today's islanders are just temporary visitors, tourists and conservation groups, but an occasional mailboat keeps the tradition alive. Our one-show mailboat is quite a simple design. It's basically a hollowed-out piece of wood with a buoy attached, and traditionally, this would have been an inflated sheep's bladder. It's very heavy at the base, so it should stay upright, allowing the GPS tracker inside the Tupperware box to work. Also inside is a note for the finder, telling him or her to contact the one-show with his whereabouts. So how long will it take for the post to arrive? With the right wind, two-thirds of mail boats have made it to the mainland, though some go as far as Scandinavia and may take months to get there. St Kilda has an extreme exposure to waves, a huge swell and deep oceanic currents, making it tough to get here and even more difficult to predict where my tiny mail boat is going to end up. We'll just have to wait and see. The moment of truth. For more than six weeks, we monitored the redoubtable one-show mailboat before its signal faded. Heading not to the mainland, but hundreds of miles off course bound for Norway, lost in the mail for now. And the one-show mailboat has just given me a letter to say that the stupid stand-in host has forgotten to name-check one of the acts that he introduced to the comedy store. <laughs>